Hello, Hack a Week viewers. Uh, this week I'm going to make another robot. That's right. Take this one, the one that you've all seen a few times, took this to Maker Faire. Uh, I'm going to gut this out, narrow it up a little bit, and uh, give it a little bit better turning ability, I think, when it tank steers. And to do that, I'm going to make a whole new frame for it with the rocker suspension and all that. And I'm going to use these things. They're called micro racks. Really cool stuff. Uh, I was uh, donated these quite some time ago. Sorry for the big delay. I pretty much just about forgot I had them until uh, this evening when I was brainstorming on making a new frame for my robot and remembered I've got micro racks. i got a whole kit and I pulled them out and immediately I can see just what I want to build with these. So that's what you're going to get to watch in this week's video. Here we go. Let's get a closer view at what we're working with here. We've got these channels uh, that are extruded aluminum and they have uh, a little T section on each side and these anchor plates go in there. These little anchor plates, these guys, they are threaded. They're threaded for these Allen screws. You also get lock washers. And then you slide the, uh, the little tab that's threaded right into the channel. And then the beauty of this is you can move that anywhere you want along the channel and then anchor something to it. And then you get these right angle brackets. So you can do a butt joint from... Uh, the side that's to the top of the camera. You could butt it in that way or you could flip it over the other way and you can butt it in from the top of this piece depending on which way you just want the stresses I guess to be dissipated. So I'm gonna put together a basic framework out of these. This should be a lot of fun. This is like really cool uh, tinker toys that won't come apart. Alright so I want to uh, I want to butt this piece into the long piece. So I'll put my anchor in this end. I've already got one in the other piece. This one fits pretty tight. I wonder if I flip it over if it might fit a little easier. Which wouldn't surprise me. The way that these are stamp cut they may like to slide in one way easier than they do the other. Hmm. Oh, there we go. Yeah, it helps a little bit, flipping it over. Okay, they have a way they like to go in, which makes sense from the stamp cutting, uh, shear cutting. Anyway, so let's see. We'll put this just like this. Nope, it's the wrong way. Sorry, like this, so that we can butt that one into this one. And grab the little uh, Allen wrench that it came with. That's kind of handy. Get an Allen screw on there and a lock washer. Hold that with my finger, tip it all upside down, put it into the lug and take it to where it just snugs up and then back off a tiny bit. And anytime you're putting things together like this, anything, can be anything, if there's multiple screws involved, get all of your screws started first. Yeah, you know, woodworking could be a bit of an exception, I'm sure, but just get all the screws started first on anything mechanical, machine-like, let's put it that way. And then uh, make sure everything is aligned properly and then go through a sequence of tightening them all a little at a time until they're all tight. Never a good idea to just really tighten one and then another because you put undue strange stresses and loadings on things before they've ever even seen any stress or strain. Okay. One more to go, and then we've got our first right angle joint built. And uh, I wanted you to see this with no cuts in real time, just so you can see how easy and quick it is to build a right angle corner. Wait a minute, what was that I just did with the file there real quick? Well, when you cut this to length, you've got a little bit of slag left over. Take a square needle file or a tiny needle file and get in there and just clean it up on all four 
of the cross section. Get all that stuff off there so you can slide the anchoring lugs in easier. Like so. rack. That didn't take very long. I need to place some mount wheels on the side of my frame, right? So that involves just a quarter twenty bolt. So if I put uh, one of these joining brackets like right there on the side, drill a quarter inch hole right there, then the uh, rocker can pivot on that. One down, one to go. Alright, the next step is to get all this stuff. Motherboard from the Roomba, mostly for the H-Bridge drivers. And that's about it. The rest of the stuff is along for the ride. Maybe someday I'll hack into that. I don't know. Uh, a Cduino, Arduino clone, and uh, let's see, the uh, cross link between the two and the battery all has to go under here somewhere or maybe on the top. The problem with the top is this has to go on there and pivot back and forth. Not very far, you could load it up here and here. But underneath is a little better for the center of gravity and all that fun stuff. So let's see where we can put all this crap. drilled out this uh, heim joint so I can slide it onto the crossbar because as it swings back and forth this way it also needs to you know be able to move in and out because of the changing arc in relation to another arc sweeping this way that means as it goes like this this needs to go out to compensate so I'm hoping I measured right and this will all go together and do just that attached in the middle with another one of those handy tabs there we go. It's um, ready, ready for the off-road action here. I just finished drilling out uh, this piece of aluminum, which will become some right-angle brackets similar to this. They will go on the side of the bottom here. And I'm going to use another piece of the micro racks and mount that here. And then I'll have a uh, rocker here on the side with the uh, motors mounted to it. And the neat thing about this is, of course, I'll be able to mount things along this rail anywhere I want. So later, when I turn this into a six-wheeled robot, I'll already be a little bit ahead of the game. So now, anyway, it's time to cut these and bend them at 90 degrees and get everything all put together. Nice. That articulates very nicely now. I like that. You can see how the heim joint can move up and down a little bit. It's a little jerky, but it's a good alignment. I like that. So now it's time to get all the stuff mounted here on the corners, as in motors. Got an idea here. I found a better way to shape this so I can put it on the inboard side of the uh, robot chassis. You'll see in a bit here. So I need to do some uh, literal hacking with the hacksaw.
old school. There you go. If you were going to try to CNC this, you'd still be doing your CAD drawing. <laughs> Assembled, complete, modified slightly along the way. I uh, took out that big fat spacer and just shaped that. I was going to put it inboard, but then realized, no, I can't do that. It would hit against the frame. These are the silly things that you realize when you're prototyping. But it works really nice and smooth now. So now we're going to get motors on it. I just finished drilling uh, the uprights for the wheels to that same bolt pattern as the little anchor for uh, these guys on the micro racks. So let's slip an anchor in there. And you see, this is going to go right here. Get a couple of bolts ready. This should work out really well. Um, pretty stoked that I decided to go ahead and just rebuild this whole thing on uh, about 90% micro racks. Okay, let's get one screw in here. Oh, kind of fun. <laughs> Better approach. There we go. Patience. It takes a little patience working with these. It's okay, it gives you time to think about what you're building. One more screw and we've got a motor mounted. There it is. Cool. It mounted up nice, easy. Clean. It's a beautiful thing. I got the battery compartment uh, mounted up solid now in the center. I figured I would put the heaviest thing right in the center of everything. And I can put the Roomba motherboard right here on this side of the battery. I think that'll work out quite well. And uh, let's see, I need to probably attach it there if we can with the uh, micro racks hardware. So I can take one of the old legs, um, one of the old horizontal pieces, and I can mount that right across here on some of the uh, hardware that came with the micro racks and I'll have a place to mount the, uh, the main board from the Roomba and then a similar thing on the other side with the uh, Seduino I'll just attach that right in this area and then attach the switch and uh, the motors and we're ready for testing okay let's get this mounted I think I figured out how to mount the motherboard here with this strip that I put these right angle brackets on and uh, realize I can take one of these anchors that have the two holes in them and just simply cut it in half with some tin shears and then you end up with one like this that's uh, just a little single anchor point in there and then I can use this single anchor point and attach this motherboard mount. Here it is! It's done! I like it! I really like it. It's got uh, much better articulation than it used to have. It probably lost a little bit of weight. It's a lot more uh, hackable, prototypable for future stuff. I can mount things everywhere on here. Eventually I might put servos in each corner so that the wheels can uh, do this and this and then actually pivot in the middle on an axis right here so it can just rotate around, turn the wheels back straight, kind of the way the Mars rovers work. But this uh, looks pretty promising. Um, let's go take it for a drive. Let's give it a test run right here and head for those stairs and see how well it goes downstairs. Not bad. Turns okay on carpet. Carpet's tough for tank steer. Doesn't like chairs. Well, the great outdoors is where this thing was designed to be used, so let's see what it does out here. It rolls over some obstacles fairly nice. 
see how well it can negotiate a ditch. Well, it's still a pretty cool little bot, I'd say, and uh, it was a fun build and really cool working with these micro racks. I love these things. I'd recommend them to anybody looking to do some prototyping and make your own robot. They are super easy to work with. You can prototype quick. You can always uh, change the material to something else later, but they're really neat. Highly recommended. And so we'll keep doing things with this, try to make it smarter, give it more sensors, uh, possibly make the wheels bigger. I've got some ideas of things I want to do with these. This is uh, an ongoing robot here. This is the fourth iteration of the all-terrain robot. And so till next time, keep on hacking.